Uh, hello and welcome to this uh, Blitz video tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the uh, Flexible EBS uh, project implementation upgrade and support toolkit. Quite a mouthful. Um, this was covered at the OUG in Scotland. Um, it, it's really aimed at uh, project people or support people um, who are running a project or, or sub-projects of an implementation. It's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, it's very easy to use and it, it, it's all within the EBS framework. Uh, my name is Glenn Whelan. I used to work for Oracle Support back in the early 90s. Uh, I've done a number of implementations myself uh, and started using this in, over the last few years and found it absolutely invaluable. Uh, so let, let's just start by giving you the uh, architectural overview. Uh, very quickly. Um, it's all resided, as I said, within the, the forms layer. It's standard EBS functions, so there's barely any training required. The reports get, get sent out directly through the concurrent process. Uh, there's, a, there's a Blitz report form. Uh, you can add these forms directly into any other form, so you can bring out mass data and so on. Uh, there's no XML layer. It's the fastest uh, output to Excel that you'll find uh, from EBS. Uh, absolutely no comparison. Um, you can literally, uh, there's no limit to data. You can bring out as, as much records uh, as, as you can. Um, so basically every time you bring out a, a mass file, uh, once it hits the Excel limit, it'll just create another uh, sheet for you automatically. So you've got a million records per sheet. Um, as I said, completely integrated. Um, the the pyramid we always use this because of all the different usages. Um, we're really aiming this uh, this particular presentation at IT and business analytical people. Um, the biggest usage is obviously with our user base, which is uh, the business user. Um, the toolkit is is predominantly aimed at, uh, at support and implementation and so on. Um, and the reports you'll find uh, are very flexible and easy to create. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. So the toolkit itself, um, we have part one, uh, which is to do with the database uh, tuning. So uh, there will be a video on the NGNatics YouTube channel for part one, two and three and four uh, as we go across support, data migration, operational and time critical. Um, for this one, I I'm just giving you a basic overview uh, of uh, how Blitz hangs together, how Blitz report hangs together. So we'll start by creating a very basic uh, report and I'll show you how easy these are to build up. Um, in the application. So if, as you um, start, uh, you, you can be on any particular responsibility blitz reports there. It's also within the form itself. You can you can add them to the form uh, and I'll show you that shortly. If we open a blitz report as a developer, you'll have this setup button which allows you to write the report. The business users just get uh, this form without the setup and all they're able to do is, is reorder the actual column layout or remove columns. Um, in a very simplistic way. Um, so let's just start by uh, creating a report. We're going to call this one uh, item, item track changes, something that perhaps the uh, master data team would be interested in. Uh, and I'll just show you how you, how you do that. So select um, msib.star because I'm going to take from the item, uh, the item file and uh, mp.star uh, as well. Okay, so uh, the table is going to be from MS um, MTL system items, and if I could only type, it would be good. And put a B comma, and let's call that MSIB comma MTL parameters MP, where one equals one and uh, mp.organization id equals msib.organization so that's the tricky part done obviously if you've got a, a bunch of sqls you would just simply drop them in here and uh, you know you, you probably wouldn't be inclined to select star uh, you might want to do a precise report but on the other hand you don't have to either um, so before we get going, I'll just check I've got the syntax correct. Uh, the, the system will warn you anyway. It will, it will give you an error message uh, in the log file if there's any, any issues. So we're going to add um, a parameter. And parameters are very straightforward. You can reuse existing or you can create them from scratch. There's a case of uh, an existing one. The next one I'm going to create from, from scratch, which is going to be called change days. Number of days uh, change uh, on the item. 
And this one, I'm going to do a comparison on the last update date uh, on uh, the system item table, because we're, we're interested in uh, seeing who's done what when. Um, so greater than sysdate minus, and then I'll add a parameter called days. It's a number. Uh, so I'll, I'll pop that over as a number and I'll put in a value uh, over here and save that. Any problems now will, uh, if I clicked run, would be shown uh, within the log. We've got version control as well. So this would be your initial uh, version. And uh, as you migrate through different environments, uh, you would then build up an audit of these. Um, so this would typically be in the unit test. You can then uh, export import between different environments. You can also import your um, BI publisher or your discover reports. You can bring them in on mass actually, and it will also bring in uh, as well as singularly, and it will then bring them in um, one by one uh, till you get to a point uh, whereby you can just bring them in with all the parameters and assignments and so on. I'm not going to do that. We'll, we'll do that later on in one of the other uh, in one of the other videos. Uh, assignments, so here we're going to assign it to a user. Um, in this case, it's going to be myself. Uh, I want to be the only person who sees this report. I'm going to categorize it. I want to put it into our toolkit of suite uh, reports here. So let's just, uh, as you know, it's. Uh, I'm going to put this one into operations uh, for the master data team. Uh, you could equally put it into support. Um, so that's, that's that done. You've created your report. You've got your version. Um, you can now run it. So any issues now uh, will show up. I'm going to pop a different uh, organization in there and I'm going to run. So we are now running through the concurrent uh, requests. As you can see here, uh, we managed to create a, a deliberate error so that you can see uh, how it's handled. And it says here, look, um, uh, you've got a problem here. Uh, the select from da 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 and there is an invalid operator in there. So I just need to go back. Uh, it'd be the same as uh, if you were using Toad or anything like that. And I just need to do uh, a slight change here. So I've got select MSIB uh, dot star MP dot star MTL system items B. That's correct. MS MTL parameters MP. And I can see here I've actually used a comma. So my bad. And now I can uh, rerun it. And now it should give us what we're interested in. Changes on uh, the organization M1 uh, that have occurred in the last uh, 100 days. And here we go. We generate the output directly into Excel. You can see it's fully formatted already. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of columns here that we're probably not, not interested in. Um, so what we would do is we would now uh, quickly go and adapt the template. Uh, for the report, and this, this is a very logical way to adapt a template. You can hide all the columns and make them available. So here we go. Um, and then, for example, we could bring across uh, as the first uh, row on our report the item number, uh, the description I'd be interested in. If you had any other segments you'd be interested in, you could just bring those in. But I'm inter interested in the purchase orderable Intern, internal orderable and the sales transactions flag here. So I'm going to bring those across. Um, I'm also interested in the, and I'll just query uh, on uh, what, what others are available. Last update date would be of interest and I'm also interested in the organization. So I'll just bring that one across over here as well. Um, if you want to change the, the name of these, I'll, I'll just quickly show you how to do that. So I'll just pop that over there. Um, and then that can be made as uh, Glenn's item templates. There we go. Um, so that's the report layout done. Uh, obviously, users can also do that. You can share your template with them, or they can create their own templates. Uh, like I said, it's click and collect, drag and drop uh, functionality. Um, if we just go back to setup, if you wanted to change uh, a translation, because it, it's fully supporting, obviously, the, the language translation, um, you can see already that segment one, uh, which, which is not really a user-friendly column, has been mapped uh, manually by me uh, to item code. And I could have also changed the format uh, rather than just taking the general format, which can be quite useful when you do metrics. You want to turn things uh, 
red on negative, etc. Um, so let's just rerun that and see what it looks like. Um, we've now, I say, we've got a report. I should really change my default. Um, and now we're in a position to run a much uh, more friendly project. Uh, report here. So that is now available, as you said, again, fully formatted, and then you could start to build up complexity as you require. This is, uh, as I said before, it's uh, going through the concurrent manager. So if you look at the concurrent requests, you'll see um, that the report uh, doesn't need to be registered in, in system administrators. So it's already going to save you a lot of time. Um, you don't have to go through those awkward uh, you know, set up uh, within sysadmin and, and assign to other people. Once you've agreed that Blitz report's implemented, then it will just simply um, prefix the name of the report uh, and you'll see it there available. You, you can schedule these. Uh, they're available uh, for scheduling in a normal way. You can have them emailing using the standard output. Um, we've built some additional functions for, for output options uh, and I can just show you what they are. So within this function here, within the templating function, we've got, uh, you can have got the ability to put emails or multiple emails in there as well, uh, which, which goes further than uh, the standard functionality. You can also change um, how you want it to be laid out. You can put row limits in there. So for example, I could put a row limit of one. Uh, I could put a time limit in there of 10 minutes if I really didn't want anybody to uh, cause any implications um, for a particular report. Um, and then we can run it. It, it respects of the, the standard um, data security policies. So, um, you know, it's, 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 if you wanted to have sensitive data protected like HR, you could obviously do that uh, it, with just following the, the standard VPD uh, policies um, and then you would uh, join your in implementation. The actual installation of Blitz report takes around about 30 minutes. Um, it, it, um, it resides within the EBS. You can put it in, in its own schema or you can put it in the schema of your choice within apps, for example. Um, there's, fr from a, a usability point of view, I'll just show you how you uh, would schedule these. Uh, so you see there, that that's already got version two tracking. Um, so I could just do it in a normal way. I can copy this, I can uh, schedule it as per normal. Um, and then I could just build up a schedule and have this checking whenever items have, have drifted or somebody's made an update, I would be notified. Um, so beyond that, um, I'd say there's many other things you can do, but this is just a very basic overview. And as, as you look at the other video parts, um, this part one to four, uh, you'll see some of the other functions. But for example, um, you can put the Blitz report on any form uh, and you can use it as a BR100 checker or you could use it as an exception checker. You want to find out who's changing what profile when, uh, keep an eye on those things, or you might just simply want to export this. You're doing a migration or a project upgrade, um, then you would have the ability to dump this into a, a, a BR100 or a DS30. Um, here we're looking for changes since the uh, 1st of June 2019 at site level and I'll just show you what happens when I run this one. Uh, again, it's uh, going through the concurrent manager. You see here it switches uh, pending, running uh, and so on. <clears throat> you see here we've got uh, our application name, the user profile name. We translate all these complicated values that you wouldn't be able to do very easily in, in SQL, e.g. USD becomes US dollar. Um, so for your documentation, you get the proper values here, frame network, well, rather than FWK simple, which nobody could probably compute. Two is uh, also sensitive. So you, you see, we already do um, a lot of the work for you. So your, your documentation is really quite straightforward and readability, of course. Um, so as I mentioned, um, there are three or four profiles that govern who gets access to using the developer function. The users only get what have been assigned to them. Um, and, and, you know, as a basic overview, um, as I said before, the Blitz report now is uh, available at all these different types of levels. Uh, I've just shown you a couple of very quick examples which could be used for, for the support team or indeed for operational people. Um, the next uh, video I'm going to talk about uh, is, is going to be uh, the database tuning, which will be part one. Then we'll talk, talk about part two, which is support migration. Uh, part three will be operational and time critical. These will all be available on the engine 
and Genetics YouTube channel. So you can go off there and uh, have a look. Uh, and, and you can also log on to our demonstration system uh, and see, you know, run these for yourself just to make sure uh, everything's uh, straightforward for you. Um, the Blitz Report license is, is in a, it's a free where tr product for up to 30 reports. So, you know, if you, if you just had only 30 reports, it wouldn't cost you anything anyway. Um, but it's so tightly integrated, the training requirements are virtually minimal. Um, and in the right hands, uh, it, it's a great tool uh, for any project.